All right, so this is part one of the notes taking activity that you're going to be um, staying on pace with, hopefully, so that you are making sense of things as we prepare for the final. What you're looking at right now is the reference sheet that everyone will have access to for the final. So as you can see, this is a formula sheet. It gives you the formula for finding slope. Um, this we have not done, okay? Distance, we really didn't work too much with that. And then slope intercept form, we did a lot. All right, um, quadratic, we have not gotten into quadratics yet, but you will notice um, standard form looks somewhat like the other standard form we worked with. We're gonna take some notes on those. We did point slope standard and um, slope intercept. So we'll write those in our book on our notes page. And um, we did not get into exponential yet. We did not work with probability and we haven't done anything with volume and surface area. So as you guys can see, this isn't gonna help you a whole lot with what we've done so far in the first semester. Um, that doesn't mean that we're behind. This sheet is just the same sheet that's used throughout the entire year. So most of these will be hit in the second semester. But for now, we just mainly, we've just been working with linear equations. And so, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick before we get started is you're going to have a, um, if this were on paper, you would be graphing and, and checking and doing things on a student work area with graphs. But you will be completing this in the computer. So you are going to want, um, you know, to use your graphing notebook paper to show your work on your graphs to make sure that when you go to choose an answer that that is correct. Okay. That does not mean you should be referencing any other notes in your book. Just tear out one piece of graph paper to use to show work. And yes, that's the honor system and we understand that, but you know, karma, karma's a thing. Okay, so let's get started on notes. I'm gonna switch cameras. And I apologize if this is a little blurry to you, I'm gonna do my best, but to get us started, we need to move this up a tad bit. We need to first label this. This is our notes for semester one. Oh. I know. And then maybe we make a nice little header, something like that. Okay. Now let's take down some things that are going to be helpful for you um, initially before we put some examples on here. So we talked about linear equations and how that's what we've been working on. And we had y equals mx plus b, which is our slope intercept we also did point slope which was y minus y1 remember the y1 and the x1 are an ordered pair a point equals slope times x minus x1 and this one was point slope so we're going to label that we should also just point out that x1 comma y1 let me do a little arrow is a point on the line And then you guys know that slope is M. But that's how we write that. Remember, take special note. It is, uh, the formula calls for subtraction because we're finding the difference between the points. So if this is a positive, that means the Y value in the point is a negative. Two negatives cancel out to make a positive, okay? Um, and then the last one we had was standard form, and that is AX 
plus by equals c. Standard form. And we need to kind of separate these. It's another reason why I love to take notes in, on graph paper, because we have these lines that we can follow and make it very nice. To separate them. So I'm just putting each type of linear equation form into its own box. Now, remember with um, Point slope, you're, you're identifying a point. If you have the point and the slope, you can write it in point slope. But standard form, let's just add to this. This is where we use the x. So find x and y intercepts. And remember, to do that, you would plug in a 0 here, solve for y. Plug in a 0 here, solve for x. And those are your x and y intercepts. So I'm just going to kind of extend this one out like that. Okay, so now let's figure out what's important. What things should we put into our um, notes? And <clears throat> we can use the examples that we've been working on in our study guide. So. Um, let's just do this first. Let's also, I'm going to go over to this side. We're going to say solution types. And maybe we do a little squiggly going down to show that those are separate. And with solution types, we had one solution, which is what we normally work with. And that's when x equals one answer, one value. So when you're solving and you figure out what the variable equals, that's one solution. We also had infinitely many solutions. And that is when you're combining like terms and solving and you get the exact same um expression on each side so i'm wondering how i want to do this basically what you're going to get is um what if we did mx plus b equals mx plus b the reason i'm showing that is you notice the coefficients are the same and you notice that the constant the b is the same and when you get it down like that, or just B equals B or MX equals MX, it's going to have infinitely many solutions. The last type was no solution. And that's when these M's are the same, your coefficients, your slopes, but your B is different. So we'll do MX plus B equals Maybe we say that it's mx minus b, just to kind of give an example. They could be the same um, distance from zero, the same value here, but one's positive, one's negative. So those are our different solution types. I'm just gonna do another kind of squiggly like this. And as we're working, if other things come up, we'll make sure that we show those. Um, Let's go ahead and use this one where we got one solution. I'm using this, this is number 2A from our study guide. So we had nine minus five Y equals six X plus two. We were solving for Y. So I'm off to the side, I'm gonna put solve for y. Now 
Then we are subtracting nine on both sides. We get negative five y equals six x minus seven. And then we divide everything by negative five. Y equals negative six fifths X plus seven fifths because they were both negative, it turns into plus seven fifths. And um, I'll also take pictures of these guys and um, upload them so they'll hopefully be a little clearer for you to read. Number two, circle the final solution and we're done. Okay. So now, um, let's do a compound inequality. So we're going to say compound inequality. We're going to use the one from the study guide. This is one that we haven't worked with a lot all year, but we did do it. So we did negative seven is less than X minus eight, which is less than two. We solved this. It's really two inequalities. So we solved it like two inequalities. This one, X minus eight is less than two. And then we add eight to both sides. We got one is less than X for the first answer. Same as X is greater than one. And then over here we add eight to both sides and we get X is less than 10. Remember, we don't need to flip the sign unless we're multiplying or dividing by a negative when we solve. And in here we were just adding, so we didn't need to switch. Okay, now we put it on a number line. Our minimum value is one, our highest value is 10. This isn't proper, right? Because we do have lines here, but we're just gonna kind of ignore those for a moment. So X is greater than one, open circle, cause it doesn't include the value one and we're shading this way. X is less than 10, open circle, and it's less than 10, so we're shading back this way. And we can see that the solution for X is in between one and 10, but it does not include one, it does not include 10. And remember, this was called an and inequality, so I'm just gonna add that to the middle. All right, last one we're gonna do is our fraction problem. So, we had one half X plus two thirds equals three fourths X plus one sixth. And our strategy off to the side is we multiply all terms by the L C M. So I wrote that off to the side. Multiply all terms by the LCM. In this case, it is 12. So I'm, um, I'm going to rewrite it and just squeeze it in here. I hope I have room. Twelve times one sixth. So I just rewrote this entire equation and I put that we're multiplying 12 to each term. So now 12 divided by two, we got six X. 12 times two is 24 divided by three, we get eight. 36 divided by four is nine X and 12 divided by six is two. Then we start to solve for X, six is smaller. We're gonna subtract six X from both sides. 
we get 8 equals 3x plus 2. And then we subtract the 2 from both sides. 6 equals 3x, so x equals 2. All right, so that's it for today's note taking. I'm going to keep this process going. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, we will, uh, there'll be a new video for study guide problems, and then we'll take some of those problems and put them into notes as well. Make sure you're keeping up on things. Um, you know, each day, don't fall behind because there's no time for that. There's no time to catch up later. Okay.